Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm going to be drawing another one of Venom. Yeah, newsflash there, right? I draw Venom all the time. You guys are probably sick of seeing Venom on this channel. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to talk about today in conjunction with showing you this time lapse is that I'm really been battling some art block, right? And I, I do this every now and then. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes it's just like a day or two. Sometimes it's weeks. It's just crazy. So I wanted to talk about how to get through that and actually why this piece uh, is about that. So when I, I, I've been trying to draw like uh, symmetry and characters and, and get better at facial expressions for some lessons I'm preparing to teach and things like that. But also just because I want better storytelling in my comics, right? If I, if I can't draw people looking consistent panel to panel or symmetrical when need be you know you really don't want to have the person facing camera too awfully much but um you know there's those times you want symmetry those times you want asymmetry and those times where you need expressions to look convincing you know you always need ex uh, expressive characters so practicing that is one of my weaker suits or whatever that along with trying to study all this anatomy i realize there's a lot that i still have to learn right and we all do we all have these times when we look at our work objectively or or over critically and we say wow i've got a long ways to go and i think that can really stagnate your creativity it makes you feel less than adequate and less than you know suitable to be doing this um you know extreme monstrosity of a task at hand right being an artist being a comic artist is just plain difficult it's fun don't get me wrong it's 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 a fantastic uh thing to pursue but it's like pretty darn hard, right? You got to be accountable for all these different things. So if you let that get into your head, it can really slow your roll. It can really mess with you. So when that happens, when I start to get overly critical of myself, when I start to lack that creative vibe, when I, when I start to run short of ideas, there's a series of things that I might do. This is one of them. So what this is, is a character that I like to draw where the rules get thrown to the side, okay? When I'm drawing Venom, I don't have to draw Venom a certain way. I do look at a couple shots of Venom, some old fan favorites of McFarlane. Obviously, he created the character, so looking at his work is always a uh, you know, key ingredient. And I look at other people's renditions, but the thing is, there's so much variation that you can create with a character like this. You can throw asymmetry, or you can throw symmetry out the window. You can throw balance out the, you know, like I said, is <laughs> symmetry, but you can throw all these things out the window and just really mess around with them. Like, like I purposely raised the teeth up where you had more of a fish kind of face, the teeth coming up in the middle. It looks kind of strange now. I probably shouldn't have did it. I'm kicking myself a little bit, but I wanted to do something different. So when I draw this character, I don't think about things being you know, correct. Like, I don't have to put a cute little button nose and uh, symmetrical eyes or anything. It's just out the window. He's a very freeform character. And because of that, it helps me be more creative. I'm simply just rendering and scribbling and having fun with it. So it allows me to let loose. So what I'm saying is one of the things you want to do is let loose a little bit. There's other ways you can do this. So you can draw different characters. You can draw you know, just anything. You can scribble. You don't You don't even have to have a character in mind. Uh, but I'm going to talk about both a little bit. I think that there's certain times when you're lacking creative inspiration and, and focus, okay? Uh, so it all kind of ties together. Your inspiration, your creativity, your focus. Sometimes it's going to help you to have more of a, a better idea going into something, which means more reference, more focus, more uh, a script, you know, things like that. Other times, you're going to want to throw that out of the window, just pump some music, and draw what you want to draw. Get in touch with your just your 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 blank mind. You know, you're just it's just straight creativity. You're not thinking about anything. You want to go in with a blank slate. In fact, I read where a lot of people like to meditate before they even go into this kind of thing when they're trying to break this mental art block. They do some meditation, which I mean, I never really got into that, but I can see the benefit of it because again. You're trying to like get rid of all that rhetoric in your mind and just start with a clean slate, fresh piece of paper, and go on with no preconceived notion of what you have to do. So you're going to want to play with all these variables, you know, both those variables. And then the other thing is going to be some more obvious things like go watch some good movies, you know, go see a go see something on the big screen, 
Uh, get out of your element, you know, get out of your, your repetitious behavior. That's a big one. Like if you find yourself waking up every day, you know, jumping in the shower, you shouldn't jump while you're in there, it's dangerous. And then you go right to your drawing table and you, you start scribbling, right? And all of a sudden you, you just, you're less enthused, you're less inspired. It might be because you're doing that same routine, you know, so, so try like getting up, doing the shower or whatever, don't jump. And then like, you know, go take a walk or go to a coffee shop, interact for a little bit, sit there and draw for a little bit, change your setting, change your scene. The other thing is like change your tools, like, like try different brushes, different pencils, a new kind of paper, anything you can. If you're not working on paper and you're working digitally, try a new software. I mean, that can be a bit horrendous because you're like trying to learn uh, a new software that might take you out of your, your thing. So maybe, maybe just focus on, or, or maybe this, if you're a digital artist, try just drawing on paper again and, and try drawing with just an ink pen. Try, pick up a new ink pen and see if you can make uh, some cool you know brush marks with it. So all these things. Uh, another one for me, and I need to get back on this, I haven't done it in a while, is find some, some good pencils from one of your favorite artists, even if you don't fancy yourself as being an inker, and, and ink their work. You know, learn from it. Learn from the technical details and, and the way they use shadows, and maybe pay, pay attention to something specific. You know, like, you know, I really want to get better at spotting my shadows and making these, you know, better uh, versions of my uh, my character's line weight or whatever it is. Pick that, study that artist, and, and really go to town on it. Um, so again, sometimes it's going to require a little bit more direction, other times less direction and more like just being at ease. Um, the other thing is this, don't compare yourself to other artists. You know, I know I've mentioned this a lot on the channel, but I think that's another one that kind of gets us in a bad state of mind. We start looking at our work and wondering if we're getting good enough, quick enough. You got to let go of that. Like there's going to be times when you're going to feel like you jump leaps and bounds. And there's going to be times when you're just putting in the daily grind and it just seems like your stuff is the same old, same old. It's just the way it is. We're human beings. We're, we're you know, creatures of habit. It's you just have to keep grinding away and know that through time, you know, five years from now, whatever, you're going to look back and see a huge progression in your work. And that's the main thing. But when you do find these moments of art block, you know, uh, try to mix it up, read some books, you know, break out your old school comics, the ones that got you inspired to create and just read through those suckers and maybe take a couple days off and don't draw a thing. I know that sounds counterproductive because you're trying to get better, but when you're hitting that mental block, that barrier, uh, your, your, your mind, your body's trying to tell you something, you know, even changing your setting. Like I mentioned with the coffee shop, I always find that that helps. Like if it's nice out where you're at, you know, don't go stand in the cold and draw something. But if it's nice out, go sit in a park and do some sketching, do some, you know, some gesture drawing and, and, uh, you know, maybe don't try to draw a full fledged, you know, your best piece of art, but go out in the park, study people walking by and, uh, try not to creep them out, but then, you know, draw some, uh, gestures of those people and, and life drawing and things like that. So at any rate, there's a lot of things you could do. Most of all, what I would like you to do after watching this video is comment below and let myself and others know what you do to break from the art block that we all face. It's just part of life, folks. So I really appreciate you tuning in and watching the channel. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.